we're not full loaded with uh, disclaimers and stuff. But uh, so, how's the trading going? How did you do? We've we've been <clears throat> excuse me. We've been going through a six or seven week trend, which I predicted on Friday would very likely come to an end very very soon, and it. Everything seems to be coming down. So how did you do it the last couple of days? Some of you guys killed it, huh? Killed the end. That's nice. So I hope it was a, at least a small part of uh, your success with some of these things, talking about trends reversing uh, days and even weeks before it happened. Tell me, uh, get, waking up and getting out of bed. It was worth it. So without further ado, let's get the party started. So 8 did it all on his own. Good job, 8. Yeah. What have you been scalping it or what? Thank you, Ron. Send them an email. I would accept. So welcome to Forex today. Yeah, eight. That's the problem with scalping is it's it's so much work versus just saying all right, short, short, short. Go to bed. <laughs> Wake up the next day. Yeah, I'm still short. Two weeks later, still short. So I think there's a pretty good chance that the pullback will continue till uh, at least, I would say conservatively, the third week of January, but uh, probably the second week of February. But we'll see. So not necessarily just an opportunity to scalp is all I'm saying. Let me remind you that trading Forex is risky, not appropriate for everyone. Your past performance, good or bad, is not necessarily indicative of future results. So please stay small, stay humble, focus on the long term, and never risk money cannot afford to lose. My name is Wayne McDonald. I am here today to help you become a better, more successful, more profitable, but at the same time, more conservative and disciplined currency trader. I'm doing that by sharing my many, 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 many years um, of trading experience. I just found a photo uh, just this morning, actually, of uh, me at my book signing at 2008, and I look like a high school kid. Kind of like this picture here. <laughs> now I'm like this old man. Uh, come closer to the light so I can see your face. <laughs> but hey, that's my profile picture. That's my tin picture. <laughs> so anyways, I've been doing this a long time and I want you to succeed, eh? Do these sessions 7.30 in the morning, Monday through Thursday, here at Forex.today for free. If you pay money for a premium membership of, at FX Street, I'm there every Friday, except for non-farm payrolls, which uh, I've done now for over 10 years, get, probably approaching 10 and a half years. Uh, it's their biggest webinar of, of, the, uh, of the month, every month. So that's pretty cool, especially after a 10-year run. I'm also Forex Speaker of the Year at FX Street, so everything's good in the hood. And uh, I also did that big live interview on Friday saying that the yen weakness is likely to come to an end. And since that, I mean literally since that interview, the, all the yen pairs have come down. So that's kind of cool. The lucky dog. <laughs> so... Here's where we left it. We got oil coming down, right? Well, generally you see in the last few hours oil appreciating back into the 618. What happens when oil appreciates? How do we turn this into a currency trade? Good morning, Fendi. You look for CAD appreciation. Yeah, loony. That's what I'm going for. But you also look at it and say, yeah, probably won't last forever. Right? Um, you know, right? 
just kind of thing. And so if you look at your CAD, uh, let's see, I don't have it preset on this coaching platform. Let's see. Uh, we could take a look. Uh, CAD yen up um, the third, what, third most? I think, right? Yeah, that's about the third strongest CAD yen, 0.83. Euro, actually, only 0.38, so it's probably number two. So USD yen is the only one, it seems, that is stronger than the CAD. So right now, dollar is strong, CAD is strong. What's the worst currency pair? Pound CAD. You see? So we could probably assume here, right? We can probably assume here CAD is strong. Now look at Aussie. It's it's uh, not quite, but almost, right? Now you look at Aussie CAD, you see it's basically neutral. CAD a little bit stronger than Aussie. So how do you play this? Well, you tiptoe into the ends, maybe. You, you long CAD yen first, and you follow the second trade up with Aussie yen. Whoa. And then you can follow that up by saying, yeah, probably won't last. I don't know, Miles. Who knows? I have no idea. It's, I don't know. I have no idea. Whatever time frame. <laughs> Honestly, I don't know. A, more likely a longer term one, right? So it, it won't last because I'm not bullish on oil and I'm not bullish on gold. Here's gold. Okay. Right, look at all these are just shorts and shorts and shorts and more shorts and more shorts and more shorts. Okay. And I'm sure if you remember the last time I did an analysis, and I haven't, you know, I've been away from this PC for over a week, right? As I traveled around the world. So this is just where we left it off. But you know, you know, I'm fundamentally heavily short this, right? Well, Miles says, but what time frame if it's up 0 0.9? Well, look, I'm looking at a 15-minute chart, USD yen, and it's been straight up for a day and a half. Uh, actually, maybe a couple of days. I can't quite see. I mean, what more do you want? It bounced up off of the um, weekly central pivot point and has been up for, yeah, at least 24 hours, maybe uh, 30 hours. So for 30 hours, it's been up, and it's quite strong. So. Whatever time frame, I mean, you don't need more time frame. I mean, I look, I could look at the daily and say it's been up for seven weeks as well. I mean, it's up, right? So, but most likely the 0 0.9 is over the last six, four hour candles, let's say. And if I look at it and I, I at that way, it, it, I mean, I don't know. Pick a time frame, man. It's going to be up. I don't use it. See, I, I put that there for you guys. Because, like, the process I just did of, like, look at the Aussie CAD and, you know, is the yen strong or is the yen weak and then what about the dollar? I do all that in less than three seconds usually. I mean, I guess it's a little complicated when I got to look at a couple extra currencies. So it takes, you know, 20 seconds, I guess. All right. But this is just an easy way to say, look, it's up 8 9%, right? 0.89, that's strong. This one's up 0.81, that's not as strong, but still very strong, right? But, all right, I mean, but look, so over here I got my yens, right? CAD yen strongest, Aussie yen second strongest. Done, see, look, I just did a relative strength. CAD is stronger than Aussie. All the other yen pairs are coming down, so they're unusually strong. Commodity play. Right? So you use your matrix charts. I'm not sure what that means. 
I mean, when you got this many screens, right, you just look at it, and I could say, oh, CAD's strong, Aussie's strong too, but not as strong. I mean, it just it's just art. It's literally a glance. So then I can go, oh, so how's CAD doing against dollar? Oh, yeah, choppy. But Aussie's straight down because it's not as strong, so, you know? Like, are you watching Aussie dollar just plummet? Yeah, yeah, right? But that's why I have them here. So some people are like, they get all mad, right? Look at your screens. You don't need to make screens. You're not a real trader. You're a scumbag. Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, oh, my God. Have you ever seen some of the comments on YouTube? Right? Oh, my God. I'm, I'm the meanest, worst person in the world. How dare I? What an arrogant prick. You can't trade. You're a loser, Wayne. I'm like, jeez. <laughs> And I'll tell you, all right, right? Why do I have so many screens? Because I'm an, I'm an arrogant pig, because I'm a scumbag. <laughs> no, because it's just easy to look at the currencies. I mean, look, I can trade with one laptop, too. That's fine. I mean, right? Right? But look, I just like it's just easier. Like, what's so bad? Why, why am I a bad person? Because I have a lot of screens. Right? I mean, it's funny, right? Like, why, why do people get so angry? Uh, which indicator, Dennis? Uh, the one on the side, yeah, yeah. Uh, this one, right? Oops, I did it again. Heat map gradient scale. Well, you know, another, lots of other people get mad because I don't like... I don't put you in specific trades. I don't just say, all right, everybody, I'm going to short the Euro USD. Let's all go together. One, two, three, boobay. I mean, I think a lot of people want that. Okay, you got that? So, therefore, if I don't do that, I must be a scumbag loser. But it's just, you know, it's it's YouTube stuff, right? So whatever, man. Whatever. All right. Yeah, the whole world is insane. Well, here's the thing, right? I'd have to have, I'd have to, and I've tried this before. Before uh, When I ran FX Boot Camp, we were open as much as 16 hours a day. Uh, and what you do is you sit around for four hours, and then finally you get a Euro USD short go short. Four hours goes by, next coach comes on, go through all the charts again. Of course, nothing's changed. Right? And then you get to a level of resistance, and you're like, all right, it's turning over. Short. <laughs> I mean, why do you need to be around 16 hours a day for that, right? Yeah. Oh, well, come back in nine hours. There might be another setup. And, of course... The people that are sitting around for free signals or, or for signals are sitting around like this. And when finally the coach goes short, I mean, they're not there anyway. So it's just, it's just better just to teach you how to make your own dang decisions, right? I mean, come on. If you want me to manage your money, hand it over. I need a minimum of $5 million from you. And I'll, I'll charge you an appropriate fee. And I'll make all the decisions for you. Don't worry about it. All right. So anyway, so gold's still going down. A little bit of a uh, uh, little bit of an up move here on uh, oily, right? That's fine. Uh, you know, getting it back up to 55. I wouldn't like to see that. I'd like to keep it below the 54. If it goes to 55, it just changes things. Because uh, then I'd look for a double top. But I, I wouldn't be buying this. And, and like I was suggesting yesterday, uh, I think this is key. 
not only is it uh, 54, if it drops at 54, it means nobody wants it to go above 55, and they're already double topped on 55, plus it's a 618, so why not, right? So get this elevator, drop it like it's hot. Cool. That's what I'm hoping for. <laughs> Ron says those uh, negative comments. Uh, it says it handicaps people. <laughs> I read it like like you're saying it's handicapped people. Like there's paraplegics and quadriplegics <laughs> in their wheelchairs. You're a goddamn asshole. <laughs> you are the worst traitor in the world. You are a scumbag. How dare you? <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, it retards people. Yes, yeah, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. All right. So the USD, Miles wants to know, how, how does it know it's up a, <laughs> 0 0.9? What do you mean it's, what time frame is it up 0.9%? I don't know, pick a time frame, right? We're just picking on you, Miles. Right. Which time frame? Uh, any time frame you want, right? Any time you want. So there's a, that looks pretty bullish. Right. Oops, I did it again. I killed your lazy trade. Oh, baby, baby. All right. So, so what? What's in play here? Well, if you go a little lower, and I didn't quite grab this right. It, this is sixteen, right? And I've taught you the psych levels are incredibly important on USDN, specifically this pair, right? How many people know that? I say absolutely, incredibly important on specifically USDN, right? All right? Great. So you take this peak to valley here and you fib the sucker out, and you're like, there's the zone, right? 382 to 618. But check this out. Here's the actual bottom. Let me use my bionic eyes. 1650, man. 1650. So it just came down, tickled the midpoint psych. Should be up. So what are you going to do? Play it like a fifty percent. If you play it like a fifty percent, your target is buck twenty. So I incorporate the buck twenty, and I'm going to say, you know what? That's important to humans, right? More than one nineteen for some particular reason, right? One twenty. Ooh, one twenty. So because it's important for some reason, like a computer wouldn't care, right? But a human would say, oh, that's one twenty. I'm going to assume that's uh, is stupid important for humans so i'm going to say play it the conservative side and instead of targeting a buck 20 target 1950. sure what i'm talking about because i think a lot there's going to be a lot of profit taking going into a buck 20 and it may only hit like 1989 and down right You know what I mean? So you got to throw in a little human nature in there. Okay. Now, what if it collapses here? Well, you got to deal with that, right? Seems to me this should go to either 1850 and collapse. Right, that's really where it is, or it just won't, right? I mean, it can do it here because we're at 18 even, and that creates a lower high. But wouldn't we want a, at least a double top before a drop if it's going to come down, right? But the two strongest currencies in the world right now are USD and yen, really. I mean, okay, CAD and Aussie, but I, I mean just in general, right? 
So it's so funny, like if you've been around the, the financial markets for a long time, it, it's really laughable. I mean, I'm telling you, laughable. When but all pre-crisis, right, before the financial crisis, let's say 2006, 2005, Everybody was freaking out. The U.S. dollar is worthless. It's so weak. It, it's going to lose its reserve currency status. Euro's going to take over. China's going to take over. It's all over. The American dollar is not worth the paper it's printed on. Blah, 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 blah. It's going to ruin the economy. Was, any, was anyone around back then? Right? I mean, it was the end of the world because the dollar is so weak. Now what is it? Oh my God, the dollar is so strong. It's the end of the world. It's going to kill everything. There goes exports. The jobs are going to go away. The economy and blah, blah. Where do these idiots come from? <laughs> Why is the dollar so strong? Well, but why is the 10-year yield high, right? Like, okay, the yield's high. Why? It's just a simple question. Like, wh why? Warheads. Well, <laughs> hey, there's lots of warheads going around, man. Potential yield. Yeah, those are all good answers. But it, remember, what we do is relative. Every other economy sucks in comparison. Okay? So the dollar's strong. It just shows... This is the right place to put your money. This is the right place to invest. It's the right place to save. Okay? And the dollar's strong. So when the dollar was weak, what did that mean? Was the United States pathetic? Was it at the brinks of, brink of collapse in 2005, 2006? No, it was filthy, stinking rich. So what does it mean then if the dollar's weak? Does it have anything to do with the U.S. economy? So let, let me put it in perspective. U.S. Do, uh, US economy, ripper strong in 2005. Dollar pathetic. Right? In the United States today, economy ripper strong. Right? And the U.S. dollar, unbelievably overvalued. So you have a strong economy in 2005, Unbelievably undervalued uh, currency. The U.S. Uh, the U.S. economy is strong now. Incredibly overvalued USD. So what does it all mean, Basil? Remember, we tr trade in pairs. Twins, Basil. Twins. What What's it all about? If it if if the U.S. dollar has nothing to do, if I just break the correlation like that, if it has nothing to do with the U.S. economy, what does it have to do? What does it have to do with it? Yeah, but why? Central banks just respond to something. Central banks don't do it. They respond to something. The other countries are in, different, in, in a different shape. So it's the supply and demand of dollars because the dollar is the reserve currency. It's the reserve currency because the United States will always be the best economy. Look, it's it's stable. It's got a mature bond market. It has a strong legal system. All the things that you need, right? If someone doesn't pay you, you drag them into court and sue them and you get a fair trial. I mean, you go to other countries and they're like, oh, you're a foreigner and you're trying to sue a local boy? Yeah, good luck, right? So, it has to do with the rest of the economy globally. So if, let's say, Europe's in trouble and they're bleeding to death, the money's flowing to the United States. That's all. So the dollar's strong. When Europe gets its act together, and Europe, and then that stabilizes the global economy, and that stabilizes China, and China will stabilize all of the other Asian um, tigers, and then all the other emerging um uh, Asian countries, and then demand for commodities go up, and then Brazil and and, and the United uh, uh, Brazil 
and uh, Australia and New Zealand and Russia and, and all these other countries and then uh, start to uh, return in OPEC countries because oil prices stabilize and go up and now and all of a sudden all of this is going on but realize what are you going to do if you're right now and you're filthy stinking rich American enjoying the strong dollar what does it mean it means Everything else in the world looks cheap and is getting cheaper because your dollar is strong. And now you've just made billions in the stock market. Do you really want to buy stocks now when they're up 300%? So at some point you're like, I'm overexposed to the stock market, right? I mean, we're at all-time highs now. You're, and, and the dollar's getting stronger and the stock market's going up, but the bond market's crashing. And you're like, well, I got to get my money out of bonds, but I don't want to buy more stock. So what do you do? What do you do? Just think about it, guys. What do you do if you believe, let's say, the rest of the world is starting to stabilize? Maybe you say the worst is over in, in Europe, I, I, I guess. And you're the first wave of maybe risk takers. Well, you start putting money in other economies. Maybe you say, all right, I'm going to buy Italian banks because they're nine, they're, they're, you can buy them for 12 cents on the dollar. You're like, well, I don't, I, you know, you're like, all right, it's a long-term play. If I can buy them super cheap, plus the euro is super cheap relative to what it usually is. Now you're, 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 you're buying something for 12 cents that used to be a dollar, right? Yeah, you know, Miles says, good luck with that. Yeah, but what if it's a 20-year play? I told everybody I knew to buy a Bank of America at five bucks, and I did a whole speech about it, oh, like a whole dedicated webinar on it, why you should buy a Bank of America at five bucks. And I said, what's the bailout price? $2.50? $1? Like, when does the, when does it, when does the U.S. government bail them out? Like, is the Fed going to let Bank of America go bankrupt and completely default after what they saw with Lehman and Bear Stearns and all that? You just knew at that time there's just no way Bank of America, the poster child for the entire financial you know, system in the United States, there's just absolutely no way. So I told everybody, it's five bucks. So what's the real risk here? Five bucks? When does the Fed bail you out? Two bucks? One buck? I mean, what's the real risk? What's the likelihood when the worst of the financial crisis was over? I'm like, what's the, what's the realistic um, possibility that even though things have stabilized and banks have, were already bailed out, what's the likelihood they actually get into a situation like that? I'm like, I think it's very low. And even if the, if the world collapsed on a second financial crisis, you know, most likely I'll get bailed out. So I'm not even risking five bucks. You understand? Yeah, absolutely too big to fail, right? And I'm like, buy the stock, or let's no, I said, I'm gonna buy the stock, because I never tell you what to do. So I'm gonna buy this at five bucks, right? And I'm putting it into my kids' college savings funds. And it, I'm, it's gonna be at least a 12 year hold, probably 13 by the time they're ready to go to college. You understand? And now they can go to Harvard for free. You understand? That, 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 I did a whole thing on it. What's, what's Bank of America worth now? BAC. $22.48. There you go, mofo. I mean, look, it's just ridiculously easy, right? How could you not make money on that? Oh, but Wayne, 450%, per, I don't know, that's not good enough for me. If I can't get 500% on a stock trade, I just can't take it. It doesn't fit my risk-reward ratio, right? So let's. So, so you say, okay, wait. This is you know, this is where the YouTubers. Wayne, you're a scumbag. You're just an egotistical maniac. You know, blah 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 blah. That's backward looking. Well, but by the way, I haven't bought another trade since then. That was the last stock trade I made. 
So it's not like I'm only picking the winners, right? But how about this? Now I'm saying, look, the dollar's strong. Euro's weak. What can you buy if you were a billionaire and you're already in the stock market? You're forced out of the bond market because the bond market's crashing. What do you want to do? Double the, the, the size of your stock portfolio? Not at these rates. So what do you do? You start looking globally. Well, maybe I can buy some Europe for cheap. Maybe I can get back into Asia for cheap. Well, then what happens? U.S. dollars start going out of the borders. And hopefully the analysis is you're like, you don't just buy an Italian bank because it's cheap, because it could go out of business. That's why it's cheap. No, you say, well, I've analyzed the market, and I think Europe is going to be better in 2017. Right? And you believe whatever reasons, and you can cite all your reasons. You're like, all right, I think the we're, things are going to stabilize. Generally speaking, the economy is seen the worst, and maybe it won't be next year, but at least it won't get worse, and eventually it'll go back up. And maybe the, the, the whole Italian banking system thing is just overfed by the, the media, and, and it, it's, it's low, and it should be low, but maybe it's too low right now, and everyone is getting out of Italian banks, right, at super discounted prices. They're taking a bloodbath loss on it. But you're like, well, but at two dollars a share, I'm I might be interested in buying it. And in twenty years, think about it, guys. What if you're going to retire in twenty years? Do you think if you buy a major Italian bank that's been around for two hundred years, do you think it'll be around in twenty years? Or what? A, what about a, a Spanish bank or a French bank? And they're on super sale because of what's happening in Italy in their banking system, right? And you're like, okay, well, two bucks, I'll take the, I'll take the shot. It used to be, you know, a ninety-seven dollar stock that I can buy for two bucks, and I'm going to have a twenty-year hold on this. And you think that in twenty years Europe will finally wake up and get its act together? And if so, just free money, right? You see what I mean? And 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 that's when the dollar weakens. You see. And then people will come out and they'll say, oh, everyone's bailing on the U.S. dollar. The dollar's weakening. It's the worst currency in the world. It's all No, dude, no. Chill out. People have been making investments globally, right? It's just so silly what people do. See, Fendi? What people do and what people think, right? So dollar's going up. Great, great, great. I don't think it's going to go up as much as people think it's going to go up. Like in that uh, interview I did, like what do they say? Harry Dent said the euro dollar is going to go down to 80 cents. I'm like, yeah, man, it's possible, but I don't really care. <laughs> I don't care. Why, why would you pick a price target six months out or one year out? I mean, what's the point of that? <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> It'll go, it'll fall until it stops falling. But I don't care what price it is. Who cares? It's irrelevant to me. I can't influence it. And, and what could you possibly have anal uh, you know, analytically to prove like that 80 is more important than 92? Why 80? Uh, it's a nice round number. Then, then you're just making it up. Who cares? I'll tell you when I get there. I'll tell you when I see it, huh? Yeah, you know who pinged me on uh, LinkedIn the next day? The producer of Fast Money at CNBC. I guess uh, they like uh, they like when people tell it as it is, huh? What do you think about what Harry Dent said? I don't care. He's a good guy. He's smart. He went to Harvard too. I'm laughing. I'm like another Harvard guy, <laughs> huh? But all right, so let's move on. Dot com. Um, we did a lot of these already, right? Or let me move that. Okay. So dollar stronger than CAD, but on the short term, CAD relatively strong, right? Right. You see the red candle here. Question is, you know, will that continue? And I don't know. You should watch oil. Oil's just opening now, right? Right? 
So I see a little bit of uh, commodity strength. Um, CAD, you should have moved on first. Right? And uh, I started the webinar 45 minutes ago. Right? So this was already CAD Yen, already Oscar Mike, right? 45 minutes ago was here. Right? Right? You see this? About there? That's where I said you should be long CAD now. Look at the pullback, right? See the pullback? Okay. So you should be long CAD now is what I said 45 minutes ago. And then what? You should look at tiptoeing into Aussie, right? How many people remember that from 45 minutes ago? Because you look at Aussie CAD, CAD stronger, so then you move over to the second move is on Aussie, right? So let's go back to that and see what happened in the last 45 minutes. Uh, I got to go to a 15 minute chart here. Okay, let's zoom in. So 45 minutes ago, I'm like, you should be getting into the, uh, right? Actually, yeah, it's this red candle, actually. So when I said it, we were actually on a red candle because it's actually just, you know, so anyways. So you see that? But look at the move. So you should be saying, okay, I'm going to go CAD first because Aussie CAD says CAD stronger than Aussie. So you go CAD yen first. Get your trade in, jam it to break even, right? Flip over to Aussie and say, I'm going to take the sh same shot, Aussie yen. Wait, that was a five minute chart. Uh, one, two. It was actually down here, guys. That was a five minute chart. So when I said you should consider tiptoeing into Aussie yen, we were down here. Uh, um, here. That looks good to me, right? And so then you move over and you say, okay, CAD Yen in, roger that, check, stop placed, next. Well, it's a commodity play, commodity move, move over in there, roger that, take it long and strong, right? Next, how about, you could even filter this first. Uh, Aussie stronger than Kiwi, would you agree with that? Okay, fine. Is it plausible Aussie somehow, some way, for some reason, suddenly Kiwi gets strong? Is there a particular reason that maybe, just maybe, for, for, run, for a random reason, you get the currency pair drop like this, which would indicate Kiwi strength? Dairy today, milk price is good. But how about just the central pivot point? Monthly central pivot. What about just something stupid like that? Like, mm, maybe because of that. By the way, it kind of looks like it's happening, right? So now you're already in your Aussie, right? So now you tiptoe into the next one. You move, so first CAD, second Aussie, third Kiwi. You get it? You see the logic there? Relative strength. So you've decided maybe uh, the yens are going to move up in the morning. So you CAD first, Aussie second, Kiwi third. Boom, 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 boom. Roger that. Kiwi yens a go. Thank you, Overlord. Wherever this is coming from. Let's go a little higher. Yeah, that's fine. Roger that, Overlord. Please be advised there are hostels in your AO. Apparently I've been missing my uh, Call of Duty. I haven't played for so long. I haven't watched TV for so long. <laughs> so you you see the relative strength and that that all of this takes me seconds okay and here's the thing 
I'm actually sitting around waiting to, to sell the end pairs again. Okay? I'm not 100% committed to it because I think more is to come next year. By the way, okay, so I, I, made, I, I made an omission during the interview on Friday. Um, hey, man, I was in the third world country. There was a volcano behind me. All right, so I didn't get to say everything I probably should have said. I was thinking about it today in my meditation. But, um, okay, one major reason I cited yen strength is that some uh, institutional traders are going to take Christmas week off, and they're going to bail now and take their profit and move on .com, right? The other thing about uh, last Friday is it's quadruple witching Friday. Oh, I wish I would have said that. Huh? Would have just knocked the socks off of people. They're like, "What the? What the hell is quadruple witching?" <laughs> Every contract or option that could expire did expire. So, what happens if if you were in a contract and it expired? Do you start buying Monday morning, like you want to get back in right before Christmas, right before the New Year's, right before taxation? Like, yeah, probably not, right? Like, people are done. They're like, I mean, they've planned their vacations on that, right? Cash out on that Friday, and then what? Fly to the Caribbean. <laughs> right? So anyways, uh, it could be another factor. So really, I'm looking for maybe it doesn't have to continue dropping, but I still think that we're looking at a play like this. Okay, and remember, I predicted all of this before it even came down. So I'm still drinking the Kool-Aid. You know what I mean? Maybe maybe it's confirmation bias. Maybe I'm totally wrong. I get it, but I've made a decision. I've done the analysis. I've made a decision. I'm not going to trade stupidly, right? But I'm still, my bias is still down, right? So when's the next real wave of money going to come? Probably right before Christmas, and then right after Christmas as people try to get out before the, the end of the year. And then, in the beginning of the new year, they got to get out of that then. For, because it was their strategy to get out, to take profit in the new year and avoid the taxation of 2016. They're going to do it 2017, which is almost the middle of 2018, right? So everyone's got their strategy, of course, except retail traders. They have no strategy whatsoever, right? I don't know what's going on, right? But professional traders, they have all this planned out. So you have to ask your money, or ask yourself, where's the new money coming from? And you know I've taught you this, right? Where's the new money? Where's the new money? Well, I think we're going to get moves now, not on new money, but the giant sucking sound of professional profit. Now you can participate if you want. <laughs> it's not it's not mandatory, right? So we just got to be careful is all I'm saying. Where's the new money? Where's the new money? If you see green candles on these yen pairs, is it really new money? I don't know. I don't know any more than you. But I sound pretty convinced, don't I? But I've made a decision. Yeah, but I like honestly, right? Do I have any more information than you? No, it's a it's a fair and level playing field. This is why it's a good market to be in. What about the stock market? Do you think that's fair? The stock market, everybody lies to you. Okay, the CEO makes $100,000 a year in salary and makes $40 million a year in stock options. <laughs> Is he incentivized to tell you the truth? Yeah, it's going to be a tough quarter, you know. Our competition's kind of killing us. They got that new factory and their cost per unit's down. And it's good. we're having trouble getting the financing, so we're thinking in two years we'll have our new upgrades to the factory, and, and we'll be able to compete then. But you know, I just need to be honest with you. We're just kind of like hustled right now, but we got a plan, man. We're working on it. It'll just it'll be like three years. That's all. 
we'll just be at a disadvantage for three years. It's but it's cool, man. I got I got it covered. Right? When was the last time you heard a CEO say something like that? Everything's good. Everything's good. We feel really good. There was a Bear Stearns, uh, one of their like VPs or even CEO or whatever. He's on stage at like a conference talking about how good everything is. And meanwhile, the stock is going down to like 20 cents. And he's like, everything's good, man. No, no, no. Everything's good. Everything's real good. Meanwhile, he's, his whole executive team hasn't slept for four or five days because they're, they're talking to everyone begging for money. Get Sheikh Mohammed on the phone, please. We need we need fifty billion dollars in two days, or we're bust. And the CEO's like, everything's good, man. Oh, don't worry about us. We're the gummy bears, man. Everybody loves a bear. Rah, we're bear sterns. <laughs> and he's like, oh my god, I'm gonna lose my beach house and my airplane. Holy crap! Right, so yeah, that's why I don't like the stock market. the The uh, cash market, nobody lies. Every, it's all there. It's all fair. Go to the go to the websites and do your research and and download your analysis and have a trade plan and, and a particular strategy and uh, uh, know how you want to get involved. And I don't care what it is, as long as you do your research and make a solid um, decision. And trade that decision as best as you possibly can. I am certain you will make money. And if you're not making money, it's because you're not doing that. It's just plain and simple. You just you're just throwing down trades, like a tennis match. But you know what the sad thing is? You're attempting to play both sides of the net. Advantage, McDonald. Right? Service up. Whoop. And then I got to run to the other side of the net. Pick. <laughs> oh, good shot by McDonald. Whoa. <laughs> run to the other side. Oh, poof. nice return, McDonald. Man, he's on fire today. Woo. <laughs> yeah, man. Well, maybe if you hit twice as many balls, you'll do better. If that don't work, use <laughs> use a bigger racket. That's it. I'm going to use a bigger racket when I play tennis by myself. That'll do it. Leverage up, Bubba. I mean, it's just when you realize the insanity of what you're, what let's say, not you, amateur retail traders are doing. It's that ridiculously insane. Like, what is it that you do? Oh, well, I do. I play tennis, it's singles, meaning I, I play tennis by myself and I hit over a net and run over there and try to hit the ball back. Like, well, you can't do that. That's stupid. Yeah, well, no. I'm almost there. I'm going to try this new strategy. I'm going to use two rackets at the same time. Well, yeah, but the issue is you have to get to the other side of the net before the ball bounces twice. I don't think you can do that. Oh, well, I'm going to try jumping over the net. I'm going to serve it and then run and jump over the net, and I'll be able to do it. You know, actually, you know, based on physics, I honestly don't think you could do that. Yeah, no, 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 no. I, I, I read this book. I took a webinar. I bought a $1,000 DVD. No, it's all good. It's all good. I can do it. I know it. I'm just going to do tennis. I, and a, Right? So, I don't know. It is a it's a, it is a mental picture, right? It's just a lot easier to play tennis with someone else, and you know where you're trying to go. I'm going to serve it into that little square, and then they're going to hit it back, and then I'm going to try to hit towards their backhand or right at them to force them to move. And if I can get them to the left side of the court, that'll force them to hit it over here, and then I'm going to hit it to the opposite side. I'm going to get them to run over there. Then they'll be off balance. Then I'll hit it back to the original side, and then I'm going to I'm going to win. It's a, you know I'm really good at that, right? I'm just I've been practicing that. I can serve it pretty well. 
and then I can I can move it move them around. I've been practicing, and my the shot I'm practicing. I might not use it in today's match, but the practice I've been uh, practicing is a little little drop where it just kind of drops oh, just barely over the net and spins back, force him into the net and hit a bad shot, and then maybe I pop it back over. But I'm not going to use that today, but I've been practicing it. I've been practicing it a hundred times a day. Just little little shots that barely go over the net. I've been trying that a hundred times a day. Maybe in six months I'll have that down, where I'll be unstoppable. And I will do that next tournament. When's the next big tournament? Well, the one in six months is the... Uh, the uh, you know, the, the U.S. Open. So by the U.S. Open, I'll have practiced that thousands of times, and I'll think, you know, I'll have that down, and I'll try that, because my adversaries haven't seen me do it yet, so I'm going to practice that until I've mastered it. I'm not going to, like, wing it. You know what I mean? Right? I mean, it makes sense. You need to think of it that way. Especially if you have an athletic background. Like, really? You're a football player, huh? What position do you play? What do you mean, anything? Your quarterback, your receiver, your lineman, your safety, your tackle? What do you, how can you be a linebacker? Two. I mean, like, don't you specialize? You've learned every play for every position. There's just no way. Like, think of sports, right? What do you do? I'm a specialist. I'm the world's greatest at this one thing. So what are you specializing on, right? What are you going to, like, master in 2017? Have you figured that out? I'll tell you. I w it was common knowledge uh, back in 2004, common knowledge, that you cannot trade on a one-minute chart. Did you know that? It was, everybody knew this. It was just, that's it. You can't do it. It's all noise. It's all random. Can't be done. And I, I've been, back then, I traded generally on the 15-minute, uh, the minute, one hour. I didn't even look at the four-hour that much. And I didn't even really look at the daily that much. It was just because I was more of a, uh, not a swing trader, but a spot trader, right? So I looked at the one hour, four hour and stuff. And then I started uh, realizing that I could see the position, the trade start well before I entered, right? Because I was waiting for like five, eight crosses and stuff. I'm like, well, by the time the five, eight crossed, you know, I could have been in 45 minutes earlier, right? So I'm like, well, what, what if the five minute could help me? And sure enough, Dropped in the five minute. I'm like, well, it's actually interesting. If you know what you're looking for, and you're assuming you're going to get a five A cross on the 15 minute chart, then then you can drop in and say, well, when do I get a five A cross on a five minute chart? You're like, oh my god, it's like a half an hour earlier. So I started doing with the five minute, right? And then I realized, you know what? I bet you I can do this. I bet you I can trade a one minute chart. So I did it for a year. Do you understand that? A year traded the one-minute chart for a year. For a year. You want to you wanna go one-on-one? -on -one? Right? Come on, boy. I'll give you the ball. You go first. Let's play one-on-one. -on -one. What Your one minute versus my one minute. I'm confident. Why? And that was a long time ago. You understand? Yes. Okay, but what I learned is much more important. What I learned is I needed the higher time frames. I realized that if I sold off a four hour 21 using a one minute chart, I was almost always a success. You understand? And I realized the one minute doesn't dictate anything because what happens, the reason people don't, they say you can't do it is because it seems to go up and down randomly. And they're trying to go long, short, short, long, long, short, 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 not long. Oh, look at the Stokes. But it, it's all meaningless because no one else is trading it, right? And so they're just they're, they're they think every five A cross is a long, you know, every five A cross up is a long, every five A cross down is a short, every Stokes cross up is a buy, every Stokes cross down is a sell. And of course, we all know that that fails. 
And they're like, oh, it's all random. Oh. No, you just don't know how to trade it. So what's important, guys? Support and resistance. That's all. It doesn't matter. Without the support and resistance, it's all nonsense. You see what I mean? So if you sell at resistance in a downtrend, I don't care if you use the one minute to the two minute, the three minute, the four minute, the five minute, the six minute, the seven minute, eight minute chart. If you have an eight minute chart, by all means, use it. You'll make money. Was it because of the eight minute chart? Was it because it was the three minute five eight cross down? Or maybe it was an eight thirteen. Oh, the eight turn the eight thirteen moving average crossover on the four minute chart. Ripper. No, so what is it? It's because you sold that resistance in a downtrend. You don't I mean right? So I realized if you were smart, you would identify support and resistance on the high time frames. You would develop a bias in, in, in an understanding of the current trend. You would identify these price levels like key psych levels with fib clusters and pivot clusters, right, on a big psych with a one moving average on a daily or a four hour. It was amazing if you sold the one minute. And it was great because, you know, and I used to do these webinars a long time ago where I'd, I'd say, all right, you're a scalper. How many pips do you like to make? And they're like, hey, I like to make six, seven, eight pips. I'm like, oh, right, I'll scalp 100 pips. Like, what? What do you mean? I'm like, yeah, if I can't scalp 100 pips, it's not worth my shot. And then you just wait for a one-minute rollover at some stupid level because on a one-minute chart, it doesn't look like anything important. Right? And you're like, well, what is that? What is, how did you do that? I'm like, I'm going to hold it. I'm going to hold it short. Right? How do you pick up 100 pips? And you're like, how did you do that? How did you know? And you're like, oh, well, I sold it off of the 4-hour 21. Let's say it was you know, set up that way. And you're like, yeah, well, I sold the 4-hour 21. If you'd looked at the 4 hours, obvious. So, you know, like, let's take this as an example. Obviously, we didn't get an opportunity. But let's say on a one-minute chart, we were at this 3A2 Fibonacci retracement of the high to low, peak retracement into this 4-hour uh, 21. So if price was here, right? Price was here at 82 on a one-minute chart, and it goes up and up and up, and you go short. Some guy's trying to get eight pips, and you just know it's worth 150 to 200 for sure. You know what I mean? See what it was the four-hour 21. The one minute only puts you into the trade. I call it like refining. You refine the entry. The decision is made. The decision is made on your 3A2 Fibonacci retracement of the down move, psychological level, uh, four-hour moving average, all acting as resistance. A confluence of interest, of, uh, of resistance, in a downtrend. And when price gets up into that level, and you see the confluence of three or four things that are going to push the price down. Then you drop into a one-minute chart, and out of the blue, you get a red candle short. Why? Because the one minute was so genius? No. I sold every resistance in a downtrend. And the, the results were great. Right? And the people that only traded the one minute and three minute charts, let's say, only looking at that, right? That's all they're looking at is this kind of thing like buy here, sell here, or whatever. They start to get lots of inconsistency. Okay? So, like, let's say on this one minute chart, okay, you want to sell Kiwi Yen. Let's say that, that's what you, you knew you wanted to do that this morning. Okay? Uh, Brandon, you can place your stop wherever you want. I usually pay, place it above support or resistance. Or I say it's a scalp and I don't want to risk more than 50 pips or 30 pips. But you put your stop uh, in logical places. Okay? And very often, Brandon, I'll say it's a swing trade. So I'll do like a, a 51.50 OCO. And so I, I, I may sell at resistance. 
and it's just 50 pips away just because I'm doing a 5150 OCO and I and I've looked at it I'm like yeah I'll make 150 on this for sure so and then you look to add another one later right but do you place your stop based on a one minute chart no like what would it, what information does a one minute chart get you price and time over the last few minutes I mean nobody cares about that central banks not looking at that Coca-Cola is not looking at that when they repatriate funds right so decisions are made on the high time frames. This is all about entry. And you and the idea is you already know. So like let's say you already know this morning. You wake up in the morning and you're like yens are going to be strong. Is that plausible? Right? Like didn't I say like these yen pairs that we we're looking at will go up, but the, I know they're coming down. They may go up today, they may go up on the open, but I think they're going down. Didn't I say it'll go down at least to the third week of January? Probably to the second week of February, right? Like, so I have this mental bias set, right? All right, so let's just say you woke up and you're like, man, oh man, I hope I can sell a rally on these yens because it, there's no way in hell it's going up, right? So would you possibly, where's my mouse now? Come on, mousey. Could you possibly say, I wonder if New York opens at the 3A2 Fibonacci retracement and daily central pivot point confluence around the midpoint cycle level of 81 and a half. Okay. See, it looks random here, right? Doesn't it look random? You're like, yeah, so now you want to buy the higher low, right? But remember, you're, you're trading based on everyone else seeing what you're supposed to see. The way you're supposed to trade is you've made the decision, not on the one-minute chart. A one-minute chart doesn't make decisions for you. Your chart doesn't make decisions for you. You must make decisions and then trade those decisions. So if you want to get short, why the heck would you not get short at the 3A2 Fibonacci retracement daily pivot point midpoint cycle level cluster? <sighs> right? And in, re, in the you know opposite equal reaction, if you wanted to buy it, why would you not have bought it at the 618 Fibonacci retracement? Here. Right? Where were you, London Open, right? I mean, it's only showing me New York. Where is it just too far back? London. Okay, London open. London lunch. New York open. Wow, huh? But anyways, let's say you wanted to buy it. 618 is the place to buy it, right? So where would you have bought it? 5A cross here. Higher high, higher low, maybe. Right? Little micro fib here. Okay, but again, the chart's not going to tell you. You've already made the decision. If, if you say, if this comes down to 618 and I'm a bull, I want to buy it. Comes down, eh, dipped a little lower, boom, straight up like a rocket ship. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 30, 40, 50, 60. You know, for 25 minutes, it's just straight up off your line. Like, I'm going to catch the retracement. Boom. And you're long here. Right? Now you're praying not to get knocked out. Did the chart tell you that? No. You had to buy it support. You thought this was support. You made a decision, and you bought it on the retracement, either, or you bought it at the bounce, one or the other, right? Or opposite rea uh, react, opposite but equal decision is you're a bear, and you're like, why would I not sell the three A two Fibonacci retracement? I mean, you would. What about the daily central pivot point? You didn't see that? Oh, I don't like daily pivots. Well, then that's your call. But I think if you were a bear when you woke up this morning, you're like, I'm. I hope we hit this le level right here. I mean, look at it, right? Daily 3A2. You see it? Look at it. I mean, it's perfect, right? You're like, I hope New York opens there and drops. So you take the 5A cross. Stop right above 8150 because it's a midpoint psych level. So your stop's up here. You're risking 25 pips, so your stop's way up here. And if that don't work as a bear... You might look at the 50% retracement or the 618 Fibonacci retracement, but that'll be later today. Maybe uh, London close. Can you see now how to trade the one-minute chart? Scalp it short on the New York Open, and if that doesn't work, maybe see if you have an opportunity to uh, London close.
especially if you're at a 618, and you see a 5A cross off the 618? What if you see a 5A cross down off the 8150? Okay. Is that a reasonable shot, guys? If you're a bear, and let's say, uh, it, yeah, it's about 11 o'clock in the afternoon, New York time. You're up here at 81.50, right? It's 100% overbought. Comes up here, and you see a little rollover. Do you, do you take a shot south on 81.50 at the London close if you're a bear? Say, hell yeah, why not? You'd rather go up to the 50%, but a psych is a psych, right? So you play it. Is it because of anything you see on this chart, one minute wise? Because look, I can change it to a 15 minute chart. It's still a 3A2 Fibonacci retracement because I'm not measuring. I'm not measuring these little moves, right? I'm not me measuring the price action per se. I mean, here for an entry, but that's not what made the decision for an entry. The decision for an entry isn't based on the price action. I'm not measuring this to this, right? I'm I'm not doing this. Okay. If I'm trading price action, I'm trading it off price, not fibs, right? I'm, I'm doing stuff like that, right? And since I didn't see it, I probably wouldn't get it. But what I'm doing is I'm looking at like what happened yesterday. There's the high, there's the low, there's the 3A2. It's a downtrend. I want to be a bear. Comes up, hits the 3A2, Fibonacci retracement. Okay, this is 618 actually, right? And, and right, so it already kicked. Low. Oh, amazing. I totally missed this. Look at this. London opened at the 618 Fibonacci retracement in a downtrend. I mean, that is just gross simplicity. That's just ridiculously straightforward setup if you're a bear. There's just no way, no way you would miss that. Absolutely no way. London opened at a 618 and you get a, 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 a 5 8 cross. I mean, look it. Look at this on a one-minute chart, guys. Oh, retracement, sell that one down, 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 right? Sell this one. Where does this pull back to the 55 tell you? Shields up, ready, you know, shields up, red alert, get ready for a reversal, right? Down, back to the uh, 55 again. Once again, it's going to consolidate. It's going to consolidate. Oh, look, it's consolidating. So all you should be doing now is waiting for the New York Open. Well, the 618 got in play. Obviously, the whole market, and, right? I was sleeping. Imagine, obviously, the whole market saw the 618 and dumped it. So do you think they're going to see the 382 on the New York Open if they did the 618 on the London Open? Like, oh, my gosh. But you could just be a hero and sell the 5A cross on the one minute and say, look, I'm going to scalp 150 pips. I'm done. Good luck with your eight pips. You see the difference? And all these guys working so hard. Now, if I was scalping this, all right, because I'm not saying scalping's bad, I'm just saying you're worth more than what you're getting paid. Right? So, what you do here is, uh, like I was saying before, uh, let, me, let me move this over. Okay? What I was showing you before, trying to show, let me get this right. You get the 618, uh uh. And then you sell the pullback, right? Scalp short. Down, 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 up, up. Scalp short off the 21. Down, 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 up. Scalp short off the 21. You have three or four trades here. Down, 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 up, up. Scalp short off the 21. Down, 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 up, up. Scalp short off the, you know, now we got one, two, three, four, five. We got six scalps here. How many times have you seen me actually where I open up a chart and I have like 12 trades open? Same currency pair. Layered over, short, 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 short. <laughs> what do you think I'm doing? Down, 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 up, up, sell. 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 Down, 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 up, sell. Uh oh, sell, sell. If it double bottoms, I need to get out. Down, 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 down. Too high, get out, take a walk, done. Because this is just nonsense, right? Oops. Okay. Right? No, Michael, no. Like I was saying before, 5150, 25150. How about 2550? 
How about 25,100? I'd rather do that. Be wide open on the target, right? So let's say each one is 25,100. Oh, no, I know. Okay, you're just joking, right? 25,100, right? So each one has a 25 pip stop. And of course, you can drag them down along the way, right? Right? And then once you get this, like that's, I mean, look, here you're expecting consolidation. Here you definitely got the consolidation. So here you just bail on everything. You have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You got 12 trades. Done. Take a break. Wait for. Of course, right? And think about this, guys. Where you where the people say that you can't trade a short time frame like a one minute, that you can't do it, it's all noise. It's because they're making these decisions and they're like, you know, buy and sell and sell and buy and buy. And I bought it here and now it's gonna go up and no it now it's coming down and you're like and you're just like, Oh my god, it's so random. It just made a higher high and everybody knows you need to buy a higher low after a higher high. Well you're you're taking rules from so many different trading strategies and applying it to everything that it's complete nonsense, right? Right? Do you understand? Right? Like, I didn't say that you should be buying higher lows and higher highs and stuff on here on the one minute, because in that case, it is noise. But if you looked at, like, a one-hour chart, let's say. Oh, i gotta, I got to re-click all this. Okay? Then what we're doing is looking at things like, hey, that's the daily 618. And where did New York open? Hey, that's the daily 3A2. <laughs> neck, 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 neck. Right? You're like, what? Yeah. Now, look, if you bought here because you're a bull, look what happened, guys. Did you lose money if you bought down here as a bull at, at this area? Because remember, I had this as a, a as a I think it was a six one eight of the up down, right? You see in here, if you bought down here because you are a bull, you did the right thing. Did you make money? Maybe. Did you lose money? Probably not. But if you did, it wouldn't be much. It'd be nothing. It was a good trade if you were a bull. If you're not a bull, and you're just wandering and wandering in hopeless night. Out here, there are no stars. Wandering, wandering in hopeless night. Yeah, then you're lost, man. Good luck. If you're making decisions here, good luck. You're lost. It ain't, yeah. If you're lucky, it'll take you longer to lose all your money. Right? What's, what's, the, what's, what, what's most people's experience with their second live trading account? Like, oh man, it took me like six months to lose all my money. I did, I'm improving. <laughs> it took me six months to lose my money this time. <laughs> I'm getting better. Come on, mom, give me some more money. Right? So if you bought here, you did the right thing if you were predisposed to be a bull. And you looked at this and you said, I'm a bull. I'm a bull because of the green zone. I'm a bull because of the uptrend. I'm a bull because of what the Bank of Japan said. Good. Absolutely fantastic trade. Beautiful. The stuff Glory's made out of. You just didn't make any money. And I, I think if you had all that behind you and you bought that retracement, you know what you're doing. Absolutely, totally know what you're doing. You just didn't make any money. But you made a fabulous, logical, intelligent trade. Uh, it was just not the right one. But you backed it up with solid analysis, solid fact, malice of forethought. You were going to take control of this market. The Kiwi Yen's going to go up. Look at the yield differential. Look at the daily 21, guys. Look. Look at the daily 21. If you bought there and you're a bull, you bought at the daily 21. Look at the green zone. And you bought the, it rallied, and then you bought the retracement? Smart, smart, smart trade on the one-minute chart. But it didn't make money. Beautiful trade. But if you're opposite, and you're like, what I was talking about on Friday was the ends coming down. 
And you sold at the 382 Fibonacci retracement of yesterday's trading range and our daily set drop. Fantastic trade. But it might go up and you might lose money. And the bulls are still in it. Maybe. Why wouldn't they buy the daily 21? Why wouldn't you know uh, bears get out at the green zone as they're supposed to? They totally could. We could end today higher. Do you know that? We can end our day up here. What did I say? What did I just say? If that happened, if we went up here, what would happen? Well, maybe you sell there too if you're a bear. If, you get a, if you're at resistance and it rolls over, you take a shot there. It's just trade plan number two. But you probably won't lose money after this drop. So I'll end it there because I, I've told you this uh, for a thousand years of coaching. That if you are a bull and you buy at support, or if you're a bear and sell at resistance, you will probably be profitable, even when you're wrong. So if you're consistently losing money, I bet you anything is simply because you have no idea what you're doing and you're not making decisions. And the decisions are where you make your money, not from trading, not 5A crosses, not the stochastics. Hey, add a MACD and not make a decision. You'll still lose money. Hey, add Elliott Wave and not make decisions. You'll still lose money. You make money from making decisions. And then you use these tools of analysis to discern where the support and resistance is and when it's overbought and oversold so that you can get the best odds of success. Trading your decision. You have to stand for something or you'll fall for anything. Every 5A cross, oh my God, did you see that MACD? Woo, I had to sell it, but I lost money. The MACD told me to do it. It's so ridiculous, isn't it? The MACD told me to do it, and I lost money. <laughs> a little birdie landed on, on my shoulder. <laughs> oh, sell the euro? <laughs> oh, yeah. Thank you, Bluebird. <laughs> hey! Right? You can imagine going to your father-in-law. You borrowed all this money for your third trading account. I'm sorry, sir. I lost money again. But... A bluebird landed on my shoulder, and he told me to sell. And I said, are you sure? And the bird's like, it's the truth. It's the truth. So I lost all your money, sir. But I had a good tip. It was a solid tip. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'll do that for you, Adam. I'll, I'll do my best. Okay? So look, look at it going up. Why is it going up, guys? Why is it going up? Oh my God, it's going up. It's going up. Why is it going up? It's a one-minute chart. Oh my God, it's so random. I just sold it here. Now it's rallying. It's random. It's crazy. It's out of control. It's unpredictable. Why is it going up, guys? Remember, someone that doesn't understand would look at that like voodoo magic. I have two arrows on this chart. One here. This is where bulls will buy. I'm glad this happened in real time. I drew this. This is the price that bulls will buy. Look, let me uh, move it across here. There's the tip. Okay? Tip's a little higher, but all right. Let's not get all juicy about it. All right? That's where bulls will buy. Was I clear on that? I went, re I went crazy here. If you were a bull and you did all that analysis and you looked at the daily pivots and it's a green zone, you did it and you got the 618 and there's all that and you're like, oh my God, this is a daily 21. If you looked at all that and made the decision to buy, that's where you would buy it and that would make you an excellent trader. Right? And you know amateur traders are selling it here. But th there's only one place on this chart where I said a bull would buy. And then look at where I'm selling. Why would you sell here? 4 hour 21, 382 Fibonacci retracement, midpoint cycle level downtrend, blah, 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 blah. That's where bears will sell. And it looks like noise and confusion on a one minute chart for someone that's confused and has noise in their head. I look at this and it's just 
I don't know. Um, it does what it's supposed to do. It's calm and peaceful. <sighs> I sell it resistance in a downtrend. I buy it support in an uptrend. And I usually do all right. See you tomorrow, guys. I'm really glad you're on my team. Peace on earth. May the pips be with you. May your profits be above average. Take care, huh? Open up that account to tradersway.com. If you haven't done it, then uh, you're a leech. Don't, right? Don't disappoint your mother. Okay? And post a nice comment on YouTube. <laughs> Take care, guys. Already looking forward to tomorrow.